There she go. What's good, people? Is it live? Is it on now? What's good, people? Yo. King Joshua, what's good, fam? C-Town, what's good? Melissa Kennedy, what's good? Yo. What's good? There we go. What's going on, people? There we go. What do you do? What do you do? Patricia, what's good, Patricia? Renata cooking. Okay. Uh, she cooking. I'm finna cook, too. Patricia, what's good? Um, shut a laugh for your boy. Shut a laugh. 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 Um, Loris Thomas, what's good? Uh, why Scully, what's good? The Cameron Group, what's good? Boss Lady, what's good? Barbara Smith, what's good? Mad Ship, what's good? Cat Sat, what's good? Andrea Brock, what's good? Shirley Denard, what's good? User, what's good? Spaz, what's good? Spaz, thought you was going to pull up on me at the market the other day, man. What happened to you? <laughs> Spike, the, uh, Spike Dog Ball, what's good? Jenny, what's good? Corey, what's good? Winston White, what's good? Ian, what's good? Israel, what's good? April, what's good? Listen, all right, we got the we got we got Renata, all right, the EMS captain, all right, yeah. we got her on the live again. Okay, now today, all right, we talking about too much insulin being bad for you, all right. A lot of time, people when when diabetics, all right. They get their insulin. They just know that they're supposed to take insulin how it's prescribed to them every day at a certain time of day. Thanks. A lot of times without even checking the insulin levels to even see if they need to take it. All right. So she going to talk about or tell us why you should check your insulin level before you just start sticking with this schedule that you've been put on to you know inject yourself with insulin every single day all right she got she uh gonna talk about um some patients she done dealt with who diabetics and took too much insulin or took insulin when they didn't need to take it all right and what kind of it can be fatal it can be fa it can drop your it can drop your 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 levels so low it can be fatal. Okay, but she gonna talk about some people who she don't encounter with that took insulin when they didn't really need to. I right? what kind of effects do it have on you? All right, and if y'all got some questions, shoot the questions in the um comment section. All right, if you got um a thousand followers. And you want to come on live and yeah. ask a question. All right. You can come on live and ask just 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 uh type of comment say, hey Carbon, bring me on live. Let me ask a question. I bring you on live and let you ask your question. You can go in depth with your question or whatever. All right. And then we'll go to the next person. All right, so that's how we're gonna do it. Okay. Um Tony Lee, what's good? Is it true that the government trying to ban herbs? Listen, let me say this right here. The government is not trying to ban herbs, okay? This law they're trying to pass was brought up in April of 2022. All right, it's October. So we just now catching on to it, and it been brought up in April. Mm -hmm. What they trying to do is they trying to regulate the herbs. That, so say, for example, this blood cleanser tonic right here. All right. Um, you see at the bottom of this tonic, it say these statements have not been evaluated by FDA. Okay. The product is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure any disease. Okay. So what they want to do is they want, they trying to make it to, well, if I make this blood cleanse tonic, I got to send it to the FDA to get it evaluated and approved. 
they want all the herbal tonics to be approved by the FDA before you can resell it. So that's what they're trying to do. They trying to make everybody who got natural herbs get their products evaluated and approved by the FDA before I right, you got it for sale. So that's what they're trying to do. It's gonna be it'll be virtually impossible for them to ban herbs because we don't have to go to a laboratory to get herbs. We can just go to our front yard. Or right. we can just go to a, a, a savannah or a grassy land. Or we can go to yeah. the woods or we can go to the you know so it's it would be virtually earth. impossible. They can't from regulate them. from the earth. Right. It would be virtually impossible for them to ban herbs and you know sea moss and all that because it grow naturally. They can regulate it. They can put requirements on it. I, I require you as an herbalist or you know whatever to get your product evaluated by the FDA before you can sell it. So that's what they're trying to do. They ain't trying to ban herbs. All right? If you read the 4090 law, whatever it is, 4090, if you read it, you will see it say they want it to be evaluated and approved by the FDA. So a lot of people, they did not read that law. They just went with the first video on TikTok that said they're trying to ban herb, and y'all went it and took it and ran with it. You didn't go and read it. You didn't go and look at it and get your own understanding on it. You just went with what everybody else said. All right, so go and read it. Go and read it, and then you can see for yourself exactly what it say, okay? Uh, Christian Brown, what Christian Bowman, what's good? What law? Um, it's called um something forty ninety, something forty ninety. Um, hold on, real quick. I I tell you what it is. I tell you what it is. It's called uh. Oh, what is it called? Something 4090. Let I me look I it up real quick. Today. Huh? I, said, I think I seen something about it earlier that people have been posting it. But it's like you said, it's old. Yeah. It, it was it was it, it was brought up S4090. Matter of fact, you brought it up on the live one day. It's a diet, it's on Congress.gov dietary. Supplement listing, Act of 22, S4090. All right. So you can go on congress.gov, okay, and you can look up S.4090, Dietary Supplement Listing Act of 2022. Okay. April 26, 2022 is when it got uh, introduced. See the tracker? The tracker say introduced. That's all it's been done, introduced. It hasn't passed the Senate. It hasn't passed the House. It's not to the president, and it's not a law. See that? Okay? It's only been introduced. It's not passed the Senate, the House, the president, or it has not become a law. All right? So that's why you got to go read it yourself. All right? You got to go and read it yourself. Okay? So do that. Do that, all right? Do that. Um, Eyes of Steve, what's good? Um, Naturally Me, what's good? Franklin Clark, what's good? BC10, what's good? Rebecca, what's good? We're going to let Renata get done cooking her mushroom before she start to percolate. I'm about done, go ahead. Before she percolating. Um, hey, open your mind. What's good? I'm the valley chosen. What's good? Hey, open your mind. What's good? Miss G's. What's good? The best chef. What's good? Bronx the body. Bronx bad body. What's good? Uh, Michelle. What's good? Stacy. What's good? Um, 49ers rule. What's good? What are your thoughts on? On marijuana, um, um, 
it's good, okay, for medicinal uses, okay. Um, like I said, it's good for pain relief, you know, all that good stuff. All right, so I'm, you know, I'm not against it. All right, and it's good when you use it how it's supposed to be used. But for like everyday use or even just using it as a coping mechanism. Like every time somebody gets your anxiety up, you want to go smoke. Or, you know, it, like like me. For personally, when I used to smoke it, I would just like smoke it every single day, all day, just because I had it available to me. So it wasn't even like um, I was using it for its medicinal purposes. I was just smoking it all day, every day. When it's to that point, you abusing it and you, it's almost like addict behavior. Fact. It's almost like addict behavior. All mm -hmm. right? You can't do nothing without smoking. You can't drive nowhere without smoking. You can't eat before you smoke. Uh, uh, you can't, uh, you know, Every time you go to a party, y'all, you gotta smoke. You know, every time you do something, you gotta smoke. Now, now it's down. Now, now it's, it's addict behavior. Now. now it's addict behavior. So when you're using this for the, you got back pain. You got back pain. So you gonna smoke a little joint to ease that pain and mellow you down. Yeah, 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 yeah. But like I said, when you start, and then if you start using it too much. I know personally myself, it slow down my productivity. So, my, you know, I want to put stuff off to the next day. Ah, I'll do it tomorrow. I'm finna smoke. I'll do it tomorrow. I don't even really feel like, ah, I'll I do it tomorrow. You know what I mean? And it make you lazy. I right? make you not want to do that. Make you just want to be too chill. All right? And you don't need to be too chill. All day, every day. All right. So, so yeah. So, I'm cool with it when you using it in the right context or in the right, you know, predicament. All right. Now you ain't missed it. You ain't you missed miss it. it yet, you Franklin. Miss it. You ain't missed it, Franklin. All right. Um, you got questions. Any What's your question? question, BC team? What what we were talking about is initially how too much insulin can be bad for you. Yeah. All right. Um, like I said in the beginning, a lot of times, you know, when 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 it's people that's on um insulin, insulin, all right, diabetics, all right, you just you just told to, you know, take this insulin every day, twelve o'clock, you know, whatever. Or what my granny used to do. Whenever she was, you no, know, her sugar get low. She she kept some Hershey's or kept some 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 kind of chocolate, you know, and she'll eat this chocolate because she said her sugar get low to, to bring her sugar back up. All right. right. But really, a lot of times when you just on that schedule, when you just taking your insulin every single day, every you you know, right. you you, you forget to even check it, check your insulin or check your blood levels. Right. So a lot of times you ain't even checking your blood levels. You yeah. just going off of I know it's twelve, so I gotta take to my, take it. Every, yes. See what I'm saying? Right. So a lot of times you might not even need it. You might not even need it, and a lot of people don't know that, right? So if you are diabetic and you taking insulin, that means you're a hyperglycemic. That means you're too much insulin in your blood sugar. So oftentimes you know you're supposed to take it every single day at this time but they don't tell you you need to check your blood sugar before you inject yourself with that insulin because if your blood sugar normal your levels is at a normal level and you take that insulin it's going to bottom you out yes and then somebody going to have to call you call us ems out there we're going to come out there and we're going to start an iv and give you some basically some sugar water in the iv which is going to take you on the other side of it right so Always check your blood sugar before you give yourself insulin, even if you're supposed to take it every single day. Right. Quote unquote, supposed to take it on every single day. Right. It's been plenty of times where we go to like 
nursing homes and facilities like that and a person, the patient or the resident there has um, hyperglycemia, the med techs aren't really educated on um, going there and check such and such blood sugar and make right. sure that they need it. All they know is that it's on their form in their records that they're supposed to get insulin at this particular time every single day. So they go in there and they're giving these uh, residents this insulin and then bottoming them out, right? So then we got to come over there and then fix them and take them on the other end of it, right? So always make sure you're checking your blood sugar before you give yourself insulin. You should always right. check it before you eat too. And another thing people do, they try to trick the system, right? So they may have like an insulin pump. So they only, it would inject a certain amount of insulin based on how much they done ate, right? So that they know they right. ate trash, they gonna insert, they're gonna inject even more insulin than they're supposed yes. to take because they done ate bad. Yes. And that is terrible. That is doing nothing but damaging your pancreas and your kidneys. Is damaging it. Don't do that. Yes. Um. What he said. What herbs are good for the adrenal glands? Listen. Get you a pencil and a piece of paper and write these herbs down. That's good for your adrenal glands. I'm about to give to you. All right. I'm about to give you the herb that's good for your adrenal glands. Franklin. Um. BC one. BC one o. BC one o. All right. Herb number one. Fennel seeds. Fennel seeds is good for adrenal gland. All right? Lavender is good for adrenal gland. Basil is good for adrenal gland. Wild rosemary is good for adrenal gland. Valerian root is good for adrenal gland. Chamomile it's good for adrenals. Sea moss is good for your adrenals. Dulce, nori, kelp. All right. Sea moss, nori, N O R I. Dulce, dulce, D U L S E. Or kelp, K E L P. That's good for adrenals. That's kelp right there. Yeah. 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 Hawthorn berries. Hawthorn berries is good for your adrenals. All right? Avocado leaves. Avocado leaves is good. Okay? All right? Avocado leaves. Yes. And then some food you can eat is avocados, walnuts, strawberries, blackberries, blueberries. Okay? Uh... Kale, figs, dates. Mm -hmm. These are some, you know, fruits or, or, you know, that you can eat for your adrenal glands. All right? Now, let me read this. Um, some symptoms of adrenal fatigue syndrome, AFS, adrenal fatigue syndrome. All right? The inability to remember things. Okay. Unexplained hair loss. All right. Pain in the upper back or neck with no clear reason. All right. High frequency of getting the flu or other respiratory issues. Okay. Tendency to gain weight and unable to lose it, especially. Right here in the waist. All right. Lightheaded when rising from a horizontal position. Okay. Um uh, dry and thin skin. Okay. Um heart pal. Okay. Um when you going back and forth between constipation and diarrhea, alternating, constipation, diarrhea, constipation, diarrhea, them are, those are some symptoms of adrenal fatigue. Mm -hmm. Okay? Adrenal fatigue. Now, I'm going to read to you what it, what it is. 
Okay, it says when the adrenal glands are not functioning optimally, you can have a condition that is known as adrenal fatigue or adrenal exhaustion. Adrenal fatigue often develops after periods of intense or lengthy physical or emotional stress. When overstimulation of the glands leave the body, uh, of the glands, when overstimulation, if the glands leave them unable to meet your body needs, I, mm -hmm. you get excessive fatigue and exhaustion. I, non-refreshing sleep. I, you might sleep for eight, nine, ten hours, but you still feel like you're tired. Right. Adrenal fatigue. Okay. Overwhelmed by or unable to cope with stressors. Okay. That can, be, one, um, that can be thyroid too. Yes. Yes. That's that's what that that's what that um that's where that gain the weight and yes. stuff. That's where that comes from too. Yes. The underactive, the yes. hypothyroidism. Yes. Um craving salty and sweet foods. Mm -hmm. Okay. You feel most energetic in the evening, all right? A feeling of not being restored after a full night's sleep or having sleep disturbances. Low stamina, slow to recover from exercise, slow to recover from injury, illness, or stress, difficulty concentrating, a brain fog, all right? Extreme sensitivity to the cold. Those are some symptoms of adrenal fatigue. Okay? Yes. Definitely. What are some... Charlotte, what's good? What's the question? Hold on. Um, she said, hey, Taylor, what's good, Taylor? Uh, she said, how can she naturally lower her A1C? Naturally lower your A1C. First of all, you're going to have to change your diet, right? So um, eating a whole bunch of sugar, uh, processed sugars, right? That's your white sugars, your refined sugars, your... Um, processed foods, your meat, your dairy, your starch, your white rice, your white pasta, your white bread, your all that. You got to get rid of all of that. Then you're going to have to go to your, your colon and clean your gut out, right? So you're going to clean your colon and you're going to have to clean your blood, right? So he has a blood cleanse tonic and he has a colon cleanse um, that you can use as well. Also, go to your fruits, your high water rich seeded fruits. Those fruits are going to go in and open up the ducts to your pancreas, right? And then once those ducts open up, now the insulin you can get in and out of the cells freely, right? So you don't want too much sugar in your blood and you don't want too much sugar in your cells. You want that pathway open so it can go both ways, right? So that's how you're going to uh, lower your A1C. Okay. Um, like you said, it's a blood cleanse tonic. And these herbs in this tonic, which is like burdock roots. Yeah, I see the mushrooms. Sarsaparilla roots. Um, um, sarsaparilla root, burdock root, dandelion, hawthorn berries, all right, elderberries, all right, juniper berries, um, strawberry leaf. These are some herbs that's good to bring your A1C levels down. The closer mm -hmm. you get to the number five, all right, you good. Okay? The closer you get to number five, you, you good. You want it below six. Below six. Yes. Um, Can you give me some ideas on what I should eat? Um, Like she for said. What? Oh, for diabetes? Yeah. Fruit. Yeah. Fruit. Yeah. yeah. Definitely fruit. Most your diet should be mostly fruits, and you should be limiting cooking. Mostly raw foods is what you want to go to. Mostly raw. Yes. Um, how do you prepare the burdock root for tea? 
So you're gonna take uh, about two tablespoons of um the burdock root. You're gonna get you a pot, fill it up with spring water, boil those herbs for about 20 minutes, cut it off, let it steep for about 20 minutes, and it's gonna darken up. Then once it's uh, darken up, now you're gonna take those herbs out the pot. You're gonna sit them over to the side. Don't throw them away because they're still good. Let them dry out, and you're gonna reuse them at a later date. Then you can just drink one cup two to three times a day. That's how you're gonna prepare it. All right. All right. What's up, Tiny Baby? All right. Oh, uh, Tiny Baby, what's good? Oh, uh, what do you use as a shampoo and a conditioner? Me, I've used black seed, uh, black seed. I've used African black soap to uh, wash my hair. And then as a conditioner, I always use coconut oil. So I would do, I do coconut oil first. So I put the coconut oil on my hair, let it sit in there for a while. And then I like rinse that out. Then I go in and I use the um, African black soap. I don't put the soap like on my hair, on my hair directly. I put it on my hands and let it lavender up. And then I go in and I get the roots of my hair, uh, the root and the scalp, right? And then after I rinse that out, when I'm done, then I go back in and I add coconut oil back to it. And that's going to add the moisture back in after the African black soap has stripped all the dirt and grime out of your hair. So then you go back in and put that moisture back in with coconut oil. All right. Um, Cream 81. What are some herbs for MS? All right, listen. Some herbs for MS. When you got any type of autoimmune issues, and it's auto okay, you got to go clean your, your gut. Yes. Okay? That's numero uno. All right? You got to clean the gut. So herbs like cascara sagrada, or I got a colon cleanse that got all this in it. Okay? It's called cascara sagrada. Okay? Rhubarb root. All right? Um, no palace, which is a cactus, okay. Black walnut holes, okay. Um, the the okay. This is this is something you need, all right. Hops, hops flower, hydrangea, okay. Red clover, okay. Yellow dot root. This is and and these herbs right here gonna purify your blood. Mm -hmm. All right, yellow dot root, burdock root, elderberry, sausage perilla. All right, that's gonna clean your blood. The hydrangea, the cascara, the red clover is gonna get your lymphatic system. That's like lymphalin, clean your lymphatic system. All right, for an energizer or revitalizer. Okay, we're talking about ombre grande or queso wood chips. Q U A S S I A wood chips or ombre grande. You're welcome. All right, chaparral. All right, valerian. Sea moss. All right, this is energizers. All right, bromide. Sea moss and bladder rat. Okay. All right. Um, like I said, M MS is caused by compromised mucose membranes on the brain that prevent it from breathing and getting oxygen that it needs. This comes from eating animals, processed sugar, hybrids, and starches. Okay. All right. So that's go to your gut, clean your gut. If you got something like MS, clean your stomach, clean your gut. All right, if you got something like MA, start right there. Start. Right there. Um. Um. Tip: I made um fried mush oyster mushrooms, fonio, um, and uh, I made chickpea scramble. I ate greens for breakfast for seven days. My my body felt great. Uh, it gave me so much energy. Yeah. Yeah, if you eat spinach, it's gonna rob you of iron. 
if you eat your, your leafy green like your dandelions and your kales and your and your amaranth and your all right, you should feel good. You should be flushed out and all that. So you should feel good. Brother, I will send you an email for the two best herbs. All right, BC team. Tiny baby, what's good? Been on jury duty all day. Okay, Tiny Baby. I'm ready to order since you made me wait. It's cool. I'm ready. Tequila. My bad. Listen, you know I be, you know I be busy. You know I be busy. You gotta hit me. My bad. My bad. What up? Yeah, um a lot of diseases are caused by parasites. Yeah, I'll, I'll, every disease. She, every mm -hmm. disease. Every disease. Yeah. Um, you sent me an email? Okay, brother. No. Okay. TinaTheBomb.com, what's good? Phoebe, what's good? What's good? Phoebe, are you at work tonight? F F P thirty six ninety. What's good? Phoebe, are you at work tonight? Spiritually in tune. What's good? Seventeen South Captain. What's good? Tiffany. What's good? Uh, Juanita, what's good? Norma, what's good? Sean, what's good? Uh, Revive, what's good? Oh, you headed there. Uh, um, Phoebe, uh, uh, when you get, if you feel like it, we can bring you on live so you can talk about your journey when you went from, when you went from, uh, oh yeah, we can do that. When you, uh, went on your 90 day fast and you lost weight all right you can come on come on and laugh and, and and give everybody a a, a a you know a rundown on 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 you know how it was for you and all that you won't do that you won't do that stacy jackson what's good stacy rico suave what's good psychedelic what's good super day what's good P. Carter, what's good? Mark Robinson, what's good? I can bring you on if you want, Fever. Toby, what's good? Where should a beginner begin? A beginner for what? Like yeah, this? For, for, for changing your diet or for going on like an Avalon lifestyle? You first got to get the um the approved list, right? So you need the list of what to eat. That way you know what to go get. Then you can go shopping and get those things, and you have to remove what's in your cabinets already that's trash. You have to start removing that stuff. That way you won't even be tempted to even use it. Just go get the approved stuff, and now you got your list. Then you can get your e-books, your recipe books, and stuff like that to give you ideas of what to cook. And you start there, man. That's the, the best place to start. And in your mind, you gotta want to change. Um, he said, Franklin said, where do y'all get all this information? Me and my friend need this. I'm excited to tell them. Um for me, listen, for me, I'm gonna let her right. tell you her background and her credentials and all that. All right, but me personally, I I went on this journey by myself, okay. So I did a bunch of researching. I I listened to a bunch of Dr. CB videos on YouTube. I got a bunch of books. Um, I did a bunch of, you know, I changed my life, basically. I changed my life from eating pork and meat and, you know, cakes and drinks. And I, I basically did a 360. I changed my whole life, okay? To be able to, you know, be what I'm trying to tell somebody else to do. So, and baby, what was your question? 
Mm. What was your question, Tana, baby? I don't see it. Me neither. I see hey, hey. Drop in and say hello. But mm -hmm. I've been on jury duty. I've seen that. That's the last thing hey, I've Tell me what you say, Tana, baby. Tana, baby. Talk to your boy. Yeah, but so... So, like I said, I basically, um, you know, I did it just wanting to live better and be better. And then once I once I started incorporating the herbs in my life, I started incorporating the food in my life. I I saw the benefits for myself, and then I was like, okay, everybody need to know this. All right, everybody need to know this. So that's when I went to just you know going live and telling people this and this and this. So it's still an ongoing process. It's still an ongoing, you know, still learning. It's still doing all that, all right? So it ain't just like, you know, something you can just get to a point where you can stop, all right? It's, it's still a, um, a process. But she can tell you her background and how long she been, you know, in the medical and doing all that. So... So, for me, I've been in the medical field for nearly 20 years. Um, I'm currently a EMS captain, so I have a lot of anatomy and physiology. I know how the body works. I know how the organs function and how you get blood, high blood pressure, diabetes. I know all that. So, that's my background there. And then, plus, now that I'm on a holistic lifestyle, I've searched and researched a lot of the herbs. Um, so I was vegan for five years, right? And I still, I was healthier than I was when I was eating meat, but I wasn't feeling how I wanted to feel. I still felt like constipated, bloated, sluggish. Weight was still up and down because I was still eating a lot of processed foods. I was still eating a bunch of white rice and beans and things like that because I thought I needed protein, right? So they tell you, you need to get your protein, protein, protein. Now that I know protein is just a myth. So I was trying to get my proteins and stuff in by eating a bunch of beans and um, things like that. I also was eating a bunch of mock meats like tofu and beyond meat and all the different box type plant-based fake meats and stuff like that. So I was still constipated, bloated and all that stuff. So then like February, I was scrolling through TikTok, right? And I was like, who is this country-ass dude here, right? <laughs> <laughs> but it, it, it stopped me in my tracks because I'm like, oh, he talking medical stuff. Like, I know medical. Now, let me see. Let me just see and, and lurk and see if he know what he's talking about. So then I, he was saying some stuff that was, I was like, okay, he might know a little something. something. So... I kept watching and watching, and then, like, for maybe, like, three weeks, I was just watching. And then, like, March, I was, like, just jumped in there, man. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to start transitioning from vegan to alkaline. I'm going to remove these hybrid, these GMOs, these fake meats and stuff out of my diet and just see how my body changes and how my body reacts. And I promise you guys, within, like, a matter of a week, I immediately felt the difference, right? I wasn't sluggish. I wasn't bloated. My stomach went flat. Um, I had more energy, mental clarity, focus, all that. So I was like, yeah, this is it right here. And ever since March, I haven't looked back, right? And it's still a continual learning process. So once you get in it, you got to still keep learning, right? Still keep learning. And so I've learned a lot of herbs through Trey, through him, saying different herbs and things like that. And so then I go back and I look it up and I write down stuff. I study and I do all that. That's how you learn. Just like you in school, you learn, you keep learning. So that's how I learn. Oh, so so now I put my medical background with the holistic way. And now I'm able to tell people why they got certain illnesses and diseases and how they can treat it to get rid of it. 
Okay. Um, tiny baby. Oh, uh, pumpkin seeds for baby parasite. Says ready. Uh, baby says she ready. Huh? Baby says she ready. Oh, you ready? Okay, okay, Phoebe, I'm gonna bring you on. Oh, uh, tiny baby. The parasite and the pumpkin seeds. Listen. Like I said, pumpkin seeds or the pumpkin is the hybrid of the squash. squash yeah. So you can get the the, mm -hmm. the, the squash like a, a pumpkin, that big green squash like a pumpkin. You know what I'm talking about? That squash, that, that shape like a pumpkin. You can do the squash seeds for parasites. Like Papaya said, seeds. You know, y'all by now you know how you you know how you know how I rock. So pumpkins ain't never been a part of nothing I do. All right, so I would do pumpkin seeds. I would do the squash. Protein is a meal. I would do the squash. I would do pumpkin seeds. So, but if you want to do pumpkin seeds. You could do pumpkin seeds, all right? But I'm just telling you, the pumpkin is the hybrid of the squash. Right. So I would do the squash instead of the pumpkin. So. She says, why is getting protein a myth? Our body runs off minerals. We need minerals, right? And if you want... What we see, we would consider protein. That would be your chickpeas, all your ancient grains, your fonio, your quinoa, your amaranth. Um, it would be avocado. It would be walnuts and Brazil nuts and things like that would be considered our protein. But all the animals that you consider protein, they get their protein from plants. Right. So why they don't eat me. Second hand. Why don't do you second hand go straight to the source? Why do you second go straight to the source? Phoebe, what's good? Hey, everybody. How is everyone? What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? So, listen. See, so y'all eating good. I'm good. I'm good. So, listen, Phoebe. Uh, won't you give a start from the beginning? Start from the beginning and, and, and bring us up to present day on how you were before you started eating healthy what gave you the the, the motivation to want to be healthy I did you start what did you do how was you feeling what was what was take us back to the old baby and bring us up to the new baby good Can you, you hear me or not? You heard me? I think you're breaking up. Oh, I'm breaking up? No, she is. Yeah, can y'all hear me? Yeah. We yeah, can we hear you. you now. Can y'all hear me, though? Yeah. Yeah. So, so um, I just want to make sure everybody can hear me. Yeah, you clear. Um, so, actually, actually, uh, what happened was I was just at a dark place in my life. Uh, actually, this time last year, actually, it's, it's really about to come up on a year. Uh, actually, Thanksgiving will make it a year that I've been alkaline. Um, so this time last year, I was really in a dark place. I was going through a divorce. Um, I was working two jobs. My blood pressure was sky high. Like, literally, my blood pressure was always, like, 180 over 114. Um, due to basically just stress because I wasn't really a big meat eater. I was more of a snacker, like Debbie Cakes, crackers, and cheese, because I, I worked a lot. So I really didn't have time to eat, like, big meals. I only really had time to snack. Uh, but I think most of my problems were just, you know, depression and stress and anxiety that I was going through. And plus, I was a big smoker. Uh, I was smoking like a box of black and miles a day wow. just to make it through the day. Like literally, I was a property manager from eight to five. And then I was a store manager, a restaurant manager from like five thirty to twelve in the morning. 
And I did that five days a week, mm. 72 hours a week, literally. Like, I was working up a storm, and I was going through all that, and I was eating unhealthy. So that caused my blood pressure to be really high. And I didn't really realize it was that high at first until one night I went to work and I almost fainted. Mm -hmm. Like I was under so much pressure. And again, I had almost had smoked my whole box of Black and Miles that day. And I couldn't breathe. My, my heart was just pumping extremely fast. That's how I ended up finding out I had anxiety. And it just seemed like the whole building was just closing in on me. Literally, uh, my daughter was working at the store that I was at at the time, and she ended up driving me to the hospital when I got there. The doctor literally could not understand how I was even functioning at how, as high as my blood pressure was. Like I said, it was like 180 something over 114. That's like level. Trey said, like that. He was like, ma'am, I need you to calm down now. I'm like, I am calm. Like he was like, ma'am. You stroke ready right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I was like, but I feel fine. He was like, ma'am, I'm telling you, I'm finna cut off these lights and I need you. Don't answer the phone. Don't do nothing. I need you to rest. And even after I left, I still couldn't get my blood pressure down. Still. Mm -hmm. But uh, by this time, I had done made it home to rest. Him today, at huh? this time I had done made it home to rest and whatnot and for two weeks straight I didn't even go to work yeah. I was literally confined to my room my bedroom which I had a bathroom in it and I was sick for two weeks from just my blood pressure being mm -hmm. so high I didn't eat anything I didn't even cook Thanksgiving dinner I don't think I think my kids went with their dad but I end up eventually finding Trey's uh, videos um, about high blood pressure and how, you know, it affected you and about my eating habits. And a little bit by little bit, I just stopped eating completely. And that's something that I don't recommend anybody to do without being under doctor's supervision is to go cold turkey off any habit that you have mm -hmm. without, you know, some type of guidance. Because by doing that, by going cold turkey from food and smoking, like I just stopped after the doctor told me that. My heart fluttered for like a week. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A whole week. I went, I thought I was dying. I wasn't in pain, but I, my heart was like, it, it was like it had bubbles in it. Mm -hmm. you and were so I. I I was isolated to my bedroom for two weeks and all I could do was pray. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie because everything around me was closing in. Mm -hmm. I couldn't, my breathing was thrown off. I really thought I was levitating off the ground because I went cold turkey off everything without no supervision. Because what happened to me actually scared me so bad it caused me to immediately withdraw myself from what I was doing. And it could have killed me, to be honest. It could mm -hmm. have. Mm -hmm. But with my mindset that I had and just praying, I'm not trying to be religious or anything, but that's all I could hold to at that time because of what I was going through. You know, so uh, I stuck with that for about two weeks. Eventually, the heart murmuring and fluttering, uh, whatever you want to call it, went away. Uh, my breathing eventually gained, and I didn't go to the doctor, Renata. After that one time, I didn't go back to the doctor until like after my thirty days. Right. So I, I, I'm not saying that I tried to heal myself at that moment, but I was so afraid at that time that I just isolated myself in my room for those two weeks, and just really fasted, and I, I and I didn't do anything, I didn't eat anything, nothing until after those two weeks and then that's when i started just doing the alkaline diet mm -hmm. uh, which was just i just did the fruits vegetable and i would slightly warm my vegetables when i would go to work in the evening just to feel myself because i would work like 13 hours a day between two jobs so that's how my journey began uh eventually like after my first two weeks all that pain and all that scariness my blood pressure had done went down 
Uh, but it was a struggle. I'm not going to lie. It was a struggle just to get my blood pressure to go down and to stop stressing. Uh, I end up start doing my herbal baths. I just one day thought of, you know, if it's good for the inside of my body, it's got to be good for the outside of my body. So I just started taking my herbs, putting them in my tub and just sitting in them. I tried to do anything and everything that I could to keep myself calm from my blood pressure raising. Uh, yeah. My children... Baby, we're uh, sitting and putting those herbs in the tub. It's actually going on the inside and the outside because your skin right. is your largest organ. So it's going inside too when you soak. Right, food. right. I eventually realized that. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I during this journey, the number one thing I learned... And it's, it's, as a matter of fact, tomorrow will make 11 months. That's what's up. This journey has actually taught me not just the physical, but it has also taught me the mental healing mm -hmm. that we need and you get out of doing this. Because a lot of people, we'll say we're sick, you know what I'm saying, because of what we eat, so we change what we eat. But if our minds aren't set on what we're about to do, we could always fall backwards. Right. You know what I'm saying? So you'll be eating because, hey, I want to be fine. Hey, I want this diabetes to go away. But if you don't take your time and do this at a pace that you really can go, yes. you're just going to set yourself right. back. Yes. Next thing you know, you're going to be eating snack cakes, chips, you know what exactly. I'm saying? You're going to be eating the very thing that you didn't want to go back into because you're you're trying to rush it. Right. When it you is, really it need is a process. to. It is a right. It, it is. And it is. It is very mental, right? So you have to be disciplined. This lifestyle will teach you discipline if it don't teach you nothing else, right? Discipline yes. is going to be key in every area of this lifestyle is discipline. Like when you with your right. family and, and they out eating trash and they doing this, your discipline is what's going to keep you on track, right? Not motivation, right. not motivation, not none of that. It's going to be discipline. Discipline beats motivation. Right. Uh, yeah. Go ahead, Steve. During this, um, during this process, besides the ice, number one, during this process. The first thing you got to do is recognize that you have a problem. Okay. Something is wrong. Okay. And right. I need to fix this. You may not fix it that day, but you need to get you a journal and you need to start jotting down why mm -hmm. you're about to take this journey. Because this journey is a serious journey. This it's is like good. not something that you really want to play with. I'm not trying to scare nobody or nothing. I'm just saying you don't just jump into something just because it looked good. You no, know what I'm saying? A lot I of people, people need to start. No, what, what's your why? Why you why right. do you want to do this? If you're just doing it because um, you know, you see somebody else doing it and, and they look good and, and you want to do what they're doing, no, you gotta know your why. Your why is gonna keep mm -hmm. you disciplined, it's gonna keep you on your journey because you know your why, right? right. It's not it's not Renata's why, it's not Phoebe why, it's not Trey why, it's your why. So know your right. why, and that's going to keep you on track, right? So right. always do that. Always, always. Always try to find out why, because you don't just go to the doctor because most of the time you go on because you want to know why this is happening. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Or, or you just want to figure things out. But first thing you need to do is find out your why. The second thing you need to do is prepare yourself okay. for what Pray you're about to do. Ratio. You have got to prepare yourself. Like yeah. you got to start, stop doing one thing at a time if you need to or whatever and, and replacing it with something. Exactly. Taking it slow. Not just You don't just jump out in water. You know, you don't know if you can swim or not. Like exactly. you have to take your and, time. And when you get sick, sick and tired of being sick and tired, you yes. will make a move. If you get tired of being sluggish, being constipated, you tired of your blood pressure being out of whack, you tired yes. of diabetes, you tired of taking all these medications every single day, going to doctor's offices, having all this fluid build up, being just not feeling like you, you will make a change, right? And you're going to stick to it once you start right. seeing the results that it gives you. You don't. You won't want to go back to your old ways, right? So, like she said, right. We gotta know our why, 
We got to mentally and physically prepare for it, right? And then you got to put yep. food, put food in your in your cabinets, in your refrigerator, in stuff place. like that. That's exactly. readily available. And when you go around family, mm-hmm. take your foods and stuff with you. That way you with won't be you. tempted to go and backslide and eat what you used to eat because you're going to bring your food with you, right? So it's all right. That, right? So, Phoebe, mm-hmm. yes. did you lose weight while you was... Uh, I did. I was going to get to that. Okay, I did. Okay. I was going to get to that. I'm, um, I, I journaled a lot. Uh, after my first two weeks, I had lost 11 pounds. The first two weeks. I think mainly it was because I just had completely stopped eating. I, I wasn't eating at that time. After my first two weeks, my children noticed that I had dropped so much weight before I even noticed it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I once they said it, it's it sent the light off in me. And I was like, oh my God, like, where did everything go? Like I literally, I remember, I'm telling you, I remember how Trey used to say that, but ain't even yours. <laughs> I remember he taught that. Yeah. Them bread ain't even yours. Listen, we're not y'all. I, I lost baby. everything. I, I was that. like, oh my God. Listen. That was Listen. a true statement. <laughs> Listen, I remember. That was true. It is. That was a true statement. Some people can keep a little bit of it, but I literally lost. I think I lost more water weight than just fat. Mm-hmm. I really, uh, most of my, I believe, most was the inflammation on me. Most of mine was water weight. It was mostly that, but my skin became even clearer. This just the first two weeks. I, if you all look on my um page, I did my journey on my page. I'm talking about I didn't have on no makeup, nothing. My face completely cleared the first two weeks. Hey. Just drinking water, just doing my herbs. I I wasn't even taking herbal baths at first. Mm-hmm. This just completely stopped eating the McDonald's and the Burger King and the Popeyes and hey. the smoking. Hey, I, that Phoebe. smoking? Mm-hmm. Phoebe, when you went uh-huh. on your um herbs and your water fans and your and your alkaline fruit. How long, how how many consecutive days did you go? I went 100 days. 100 days, y'all. I did 100 days. What was you eating? What was you eating and what was you doing? Seeded fruits, uh, just a bit, everything that was on the alkaline uh, menu or list. I wasn't cooking, though, like how y'all cooking the oysters mm-hmm. and stuff like that. I, I wasn't cooking. I didn't cook until after my 100 days. Okay. I only did seeded fruits, my vegetables. I drank my tea every day, three, four times a day. I took my teapot to work. People used to think I was crazy, but I wasn't going to give up. Right. I took my teapot everywhere with me. This when I'm first starting, I'm learning. So if, if I'm going to do this, I have to take what I need with me. Mm-hmm. It's just like medication. You're going to take that with you. So you going to take your teapot with you. Absolutely. And people will call me fruit girl, watermelon girl. But get what? I was healed. I was cured. I ain't care what they say. I was almost dead. I don't care what they say. Baby, they call me Miss Alkaline. <laughs> 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 and you know what, too? The, the herbs I took, I think I was on my sarsaparilla. sarsaparilla. My uh red clover the most. Okay. I think I was on my burdock root. I was on like four main herbs my first hundred days hard. Okay. And that yellow dock. And I was okay. and even though I had blood pressure, because I really didn't know, I just stuck with those four. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Just those four. And I just kept on going. Kept on going. A hundred days, y'all. A hundred days. days in a that's, row. That's dedication. Even I didn't do a hundred days in a row. <laughs> I'm talking about like raw with no cooking. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I didn't do that. So that yep. just show you somebody that's among you right now. They did. Uh, they changed. She was. She said stroke ready. Mm-hmm. Those mm-hmm. stroke numbers. She was ready to have a stroke. She was ready to not be here no more. 
Yep. Yeah. And she changed everything. She went a hundred days in her, come on now, that's like 30 days. That's three months in a half that meal. Mm -hmm. Yep. Nothing but fruit and, and maybe some steamed vegetables here and there. Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah. And herbs. And, and, and everything changed. She lost weight. Breath pressure yep. got right. Skin mm -hmm. right. Yep. Yes. Energy right. Every, yep. every, every so it's an immediate change. An immediate it is like you feel it immediately, right? So like once you go and you start, like I said, seeing those benefits and, and how you feel, you're not gonna want to go back. You're not gonna mm -mm. want to go back. And I believe I lost 35 pounds. I lost 35 pounds. Mm -hmm. How many pounds you lose, Phoebe? I lost 41 pounds. 41 pounds, y'all. Within that hundred days, I lost 41 pounds. And I wasn't even mm -hmm. trying to. <laughs> I was trying to get my blood pressure down. <laughs> so that's what? About 76 pounds between the both of us? Mm -hmm. That's crazy. Yep. And then they had me on like uh, blood pressure pills. These little bitty pink pills. Mm -hmm. They didn't even work. They they didn't help me. He was like, you gotta no. take these. You gotta take these. They Look, I start hallucinating off my right, anxiety because pills. Because your numbers are so high. Like I said, those are stroke levels, right? You know how yep. much pressure that's in your arteries to get your blood pressure to be that high and to yep. maintain it? You can cause like yep. stroke, you can have stroke, you can have heart attack, you can have cause blindness, you can pass out. It's a number of things that can happen when mm -hmm. your numbers are that high, right? And yep. they're gonna throw these pills at you that don't cure it. It's only trying to manage it. And so when they see yep. that this one not working, they go try to you on this one, and then they go try you on this one. And all these medications are affecting your kidneys, your they liver, are. and all your other organs, right? So then now you have a whole other issue other than high blood pressure. Now you try to take medication for the side effects of the medication that yep. they gave you in the beginning. Yep. It's, it's, a, it's a whole process. And that's why I try to tell people. I just didn't even know. Um, I think I was on my blood pressure pills three days when they mm -hmm. gave them to me. When they didn't work after the third day, I flushed them. Them and the anxiety. The anxiety pills didn't even work. I, those were horrible. So listen, you remember well, what you were on the blood pressure pills, right? What, mm. what, what meal pills was that? you remember? I, I don't know. I, I don't even know. I just remember they were small and pink. So how was it making, how was it making you feel? When, when, how was it making you feel? Like the, the blood pressure pill, was it, was it, was it making you, you know, feel lightheaded? Was it, of course it the, wasn't doing like anything. Was it raising your blood pressure even more? Was it making you it feel? It was. How was it, how was it making you feel? The blood pressure pills didn't do anything. They didn't even make my numbers go up or down. The right. anxiety pills, those made me hallucinate. Okay. Mm -hmm. Those really made me seem like I wasn't on earth. But yep. the anxiety pills kind of made me feel like I just smoked a blunt, to be oh, honest. Right. But my heart kept beating super fast. I didn't understand what was going on. You was having a to heart where pain. now, 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 I even to this day, like now, I can still see my heart beat at a normal pace. Now it done completely went away, but I can actually see because of the anxiety and how bad it was. I can actually visibly see my heart beat through my neck more now wow. than before I quit smoking. Mm -hmm. So I think that left a mark on me. I want to mm -hmm. say that smoking and all of that stress, that stuff still damages you. Right. In some way, you know what I'm saying? So yep. I think the only thing now that I go to the doctor for just to check which everything is fine is just the fact that my heart now is a lot stronger than what it was. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Yeah. How often would you say you go to the doctor to get it checked? I have to go once a month now because of my blood pressure was so high. They do keep that a What's watch. Your, um... What's your numbers now, if you remember? I think the last time I went was like 124 over 78. That's great. Okay. 
Okay. Well, next okay. time I go, I'll take a picture. I'll take a yeah. picture the next time I go. Yeah, take a picture of it and send it to me. But see, okay. a lot of times too, what a lot of these doctors and stuff do, when, once they see your numbers hit 140 over 90, they ready to throw you on blood pressure medication mm -hmm. instead of telling you change your diet, right? Because mm -hmm. the diet is what's causing you to even have uh, borderline high blood pressure and high blood pressure. Right. But they don't tell you change your diet. You know why? Because doctors aren't treated. They're not trained on prevention, right? They're trained right. on treating you after you're already sick. They get mm -hmm. this much amount of nutrition training in school out of the whole eight years that they go. They are just right. schooled on how to how to treat you once you get this. Not, oh, I better tell her it's diet and it's exercising, right? So right. They're ready to throw you on a pill. Right. Somebody asked a question, what was the biggest challenge? Yep. Um, the Go biggest ahead. challenge for me was getting over my fear stage. Um, I guess once you find out how sick you are and you're like life threatening mm -hmm. and then you're trying to transition and you're waiting on the transition to take effect mm -hmm. and you don't know how long that transition is going to happen. Okay. I think that was my biggest challenge is keeping calm, trying to stay patient. I, I slow, look, I slow all the way down. It put so much fear in me. You know what I'm saying? Once I found out what was going on and what was happening to me, that fear is really what made me go cold turkey on everything. Yeah. But it, the it, fear it, it was my trick. biggest challenge, getting yeah. over that fear. My biggest challenge, I would say, was it wasn't, I was never like had any kind of like health problems or anything like that outside of just being constipated from a poor diet. So I didn't have any like high blood pressure or anything like that. My challenge was coming into it is how a lot of people think like, what am I going to eat? Right. How am I going to prepare certain foods and make it palatable and taste good for me? And so that was a biggest challenge in the beginning until I just started getting in the kitchen and being creative. And I'm like, mm -hmm. huh. when I used to eat like this, this is how I cook. So now I'm going to change it and rearrange it and I'm going to make it the alkaline way doing the same thing, right? Just changing out the ingredients. And now I eat good. Y'all see me right. what I just cooked. I, I eat good now. So it's all about just learning how to cook and what to cook. But you got to get in the in kitchen and you got to move around, right? You just got to move around. Right. Uh, it, it's only as expensive if you're like... um doing like we do a lot of fried mush oyster mushrooms and stuff like that so it can be on the higher end sometimes but that's mm -hmm. why we shop at farmers markets and in international markets and stuff like that because you'll get your produce at a mm -hmm. cheaper price than you would get it at like your grocery stores your walmarts and whole foods and things like that so we go to farmers markets right so mm -hmm. but it's cheaper than going to the doctor's all the time it's cheaper than buying prescription medication all the time yeah. so you you pick you pick your your ballot you know what i'm saying you pick your battle so i rather really spend my money on eating good that's why i spend most of my money on food me too i spend most of my money i think too yeah. another big challenge was for me was i had to cook two meals or i had to prepare two different meals one for me and one for the kids. Mm -hmm. That was kind of challenging, you yeah. know, because when I go to the store, I have to let them shop. And then because they they didn't transfer with me. Right. You know, my kids are older, so yeah, that's still see. a challenge. It's they'll eat my fruit and stuff, but they'll also eat. Just being honest, they'll also eat their food. But right. as long as they eating the fruit, I'm hoping one day that they will completely you right. know, switch over. But right. right now, that's the only thing I'm still working on is now I got to cook spaghetti for them and spaghetti for me. You hey, see what I'm saying? <laughs> for, right. for me, that was that was my challenge too, uh, Phoebe. Because, you know, when you have older children, it's like adult children and close to adult children. Mm -hmm. They used to eat how we used to eat, right? So they haven't, they haven't learned right. this way. But for me, I don't 
I don't cook their food. They cook mm-hmm. their own food, right? I cook right. my food. They mm-hmm. cook their food. I have my cabinets and my space in the refrigerator. They got their right. cabinets and they space in the refrigerator. Don't put your shit with mine and go and don't mix it up. <laughs> right. right. And, and, and we do it right. like that. So I like you, if you want that, you're going to have to cook it yourself. I'm not cooking it. Right, right, right. You know what I'm saying? But right. they eat a lot of what I eat because I cook it, right? I'm saying? And they still enjoy right. what I cook. So right over time, you know what I'm saying? They they may transition into this lifestyle, but right. I, I can't force them this way because I exactly you know what I'm saying. That was me raising yeah. them to eat that way, right? So now it's gonna take mm. them unlearning to relearn how I had to, and I'm just gonna have to be that example and and lead by example. Exactly. So where y'all from? I'm oh, from us? North Carolina. Yeah, Franklin said, where y'all from? I'm from North Carolina, right outside of Charlotte. He I'm said, over in uh, Memphis, Tennessee. He said, what about country people that used to eat in a certain way? <laughs> we all country. Like, listen. <laughs> hey, listen. Yep, all Alabama, country. I'm North Carolina. You know what I'm saying? That's country. That's country. Right. Like, I don't know yeah. how much country you can get, man. We we ate it all. I ate it all. But, like you said, it's yeah. unlearning to relearn all over again. You got to know that those foods that we ate, soul food and stuff like that, that's not for us. We are tropical yeah. beings. We're not supposed to eat that kind of way, right? And if you know the history of it, our ancestors had to eat the leftover slop and the stuff from the right. and all that stuff. And then they they recreated it to make it taste good. So now we call it soul food. And in 2022, mm-hmm. we should not be eating no soul food at all. Unless you, unless you change it and made it some kind of alkaline way, right? You should have right. been eating no, you know, hormones no and chitlins no and, and all that stuff. You should be eating no that stuff, man. Should not be eating it. You shouldn't be eating. I know Thanksgiving on the way. I know Thanksgiving coming up. Right. So. And that's why people got high blood pressure and uh diabetes and all these other kind of diseases and ailments. Because you still and I'm eat already in that way. I'm already trying to see how I'm gonna make my Thanksgiving dinner alkaline already. Listen, girl, I already got my menu in my head. <laughs> all them shitlings. Anytime I should have knew back then. Anytime something smell bad as that, mm, then it had mm, to be doo doo. Mm, mm. <laughs> yeah, I, I never could do the titlings. I should have knew it, but I used to love them shitlings. I my never mama, did. I used to love them. My grandma would cook me a whole pot by myself. Oh no, just shitlings, shitlings and hot sauce. Yeah, I never could do the hot sauce either. I don't really like hot food like that. Yeah. Um. Yeah, yeah. See, me, I'm a spicy guy. I gotta have my hot food. See, I gotta have my hot food. I gotta have my spice. Now. Yeah. If it ain't got no spice on it, to me, it ain't no good. We know. Yeah, we know. <laughs> I just can't. You know what? Believe it or not, that's why I say fear was my biggest challenge. Now, I don't, I really don't like salt, and I really don't like hot food. I just, I don't, I, anything I think is going to spark my blood pressure, I try not to eat it, even okay. though I know it's alkaline. Okay, I'm with you. I do, I'm a, with listen, you. I do a kick, right? I do a kick of spice. I don't, yeah. I don't want my nose running and stuff like that. Yeah. I don't want my nose running. But I do, yeah. you know what I'm saying? I do some <laughs> spice. Yeah. Listen, but okay. Yeah, so I, I just, I stick to the plan. <laughs> Okay. And I eat good. A lot of people be like, what do you eat? I eat good. I eat, I eat tacos so big, I can't hold them. Man, listen. I'm telling you, I eat good. When they ask me that, I say, I eat how you eat. I just eat better. <laughs> yeah, there you I go. I eat better. I there eat you like go. Food, I eat better. Yeah, so that's the thing right there, too. So, yeah. I mean, everything changes, too. Like, your cycles change. It do. I'm glad you said that, Renata. Yeah, so, like, on my talk about it, Trey. We talk um, about after it. after my 30 days, ladies. After my 30 days, guys. If you don't want to hear this, it's cool. Hey, after it's my a, first hey, wait, 30 wait, 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 days, 
and get, fellas, if it's too much for you, go ahead and scroll up. <laughs> right. You might not want to listen, but I got to be honest. I literally got to be honest. So I ate so clean my first 30 days. I remember Trey going over a video about if you eat good, your cycle will change. You won't be in so much pain. Da, 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 da. Look, so I, I'm I'm sticking to the plan. I said, I'm going to see next month. I'm going to see. My cycle used to be on for six days. I'm full-blown hemorrhaging for six days. The next month, my cycle was on two days, no hemorrhaging. Yeah. This facts. I, I listen, listen, this is facts. Baby. All facts. You, with me, I was never really one to have like long, like a whole week or uh, really, really, really heavy or really bad cramps and stuff like that. So I was more on the three day. That was my mm -hmm. whole three days was normal for me. So like June come, I had one kind of a little bit here and there. Then July come, nothing. August come, mm. nothing. I was still having, you don't feel like you would feel the same right, right, right. a little bit, but I wasn't, I wasn't bleeding. July mm -hmm. or August. So then when right. September come, it was more like spotting. But it wasn't right. normal. It wasn't enough normal. to like right. wear anything. If I'm trying to say this to be, you know what I'm saying? So it wasn't enough to really wear anything like that. Mm -hmm. So it was more like spotting. So September, right, October, right. that's all it's been for me. So I can't even say I really had a cycle since maybe May. And I started right. this journey in like March. So okay. March, April, May was cycle time june it kind of right. like switched a little bit july august nothing except i know you freaking he said what <laughs> he said you freaking <laughs> listen <laughs> what you he saying? said you pregnant he said you he pregnant, said you pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> no i'm not i'm not i'm not this a hey, that'll be a miracle if i am but why right. anyway, Hey, and this one will be at the line for sure. But anyway, yes. nothing <laughs> July, nothing Thank August. Thank you, what's good? Nothing July, nothing August, September, spotty, October, spotty. So we just trying mm -hmm. to see what it's going to be like. But if you go to the jungle, right, and if you look out there, gorillas and things like that, they don't bleed, right? They don't nope. bleed when they're in a natural habitat. All they eat is herbs, right? They're herbivores. They don't bleed at all because then their attackers will be able to lurk them down and find them mm -hmm. if they bleed. So they don't bleed. But once you remove them from their environment and take them to somewhere like a zoo, they start back bleeding again. Yeah, right. because they have so, to eat the according. Right, so they're eating a bad diet. They're out of their natural habitat. They're not doing what they're normal supposed to do. So if you transition that to humans, because we are our animals too. Yeah, that's how my phonio look. When Fonio. you transition us to, uh, to the humans, we aren't supposed to be <laughs> bleeding like that too, right? So right. the better you eat, the less you're going to have a cycle. Mm-hmm. The less your body go through any of that. Right. I don't have no pains no more. I don't go through none of that what I used to go through. Mm -hmm. None of it. None of it. Yes. So I'm like, hey. So, uh, I, uh, Miss Vakay would do the same thing. I wish she had a thousand followers to bring her on live, but she ain't got a thousand followers. Roy Jackson, what's good, fam? Yep. Daniel uh, said he on 16 days in a row. He on raw. That's what's up, Daniel. Daniel okay. Daniel, Daniel is healing from MS. That's good. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Daniel. Daniel, you got a thousand followers, Daniel? Uh, nah, he don't. Uh, hey, I'll bring I, you on. Let you tell your story, Daniel. Daniel said he went from not being able to use his right side, right hand and everything to now he able to like write and stuff. So he get better. So he on a he on a journey of just going raw now. So that's 
So this is day mm. 16 of him being raw. Daniel, how you feeling, Daniel? Enough. How you feeling, Daniel? I think, Tyra, I think that's, that's what's the, hey, Tyra, change that. Don't say I want to start next month. Say I'm going to start next you month. You will. Yes. I'm going to start next month. Speak that. Tyra, you can go to uh YouTube. I got a lot of my ideas from Trey, his cookbook, and YouTube. I can do ice cream. I do everything. Donuts. Girl. You can I eat do. anything. Yes. They got a recipe for everything. Yes, yes. And if you but go look. back, like Phoebe said, on her page, she got some old videos where she done. If you go back on my page and scroll down, You'll see, because I did a, a side-by-side -side transition from mm -hmm. March when I first started to April to May, and you will just see the natural yep. transition of how you go from, I was on a plant-based yes. vegan lifestyle to a complete alkaline lifestyle, and you would be able yep. to see that. And look, how Phoebe said, they got um a soap for everything, but really, and truly, the natural way was the normal way. They substituted. Yep. They substituted. They substituted. That's right. They substituted to make ice cream and, and all yep. that. No, we just going back. We just going yep. back to the Tyra. You, you know. Look. Look at that. That's fried oyster mushrooms. That's your chicken right there. This yep. is your chicken. Yep. So, so yeah. So, so everything that you like, you know, that's unhealthy for you, you know, it's a way that you can tweak it in mm -hmm. a healthy mm -hmm. version. Of course, it ain't gonna be meat if you love meat. Of course, it ain't gonna be meat. Right. Right. But you could you can tweak it to make it look like you know. I cooked it in grapeseed oil. Yeah, great seed oil. And I don't really eat fried food that much. I might eat stuff like that once or twice a week, maybe. Mm -hmm. Maybe. But I cook. I just, my fried, because of, you know, what I've come out of, I, I might, like, I love boneless wings and fries. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I do the little portobello balls and my burro fries or my avocados. Yeah. I fry them. I eat you that. avocados? I do the hard ones. Okay. I do. I fry the hard avocados and I use that for my fries. Okay. Okay. Avocado fries. Mm-hmm. I know okay. one girl on Facebook was like, how can you be vegan or alkaline and you fry food? I was like, I got to eat. Like, right. I just don't eat what you eat. You know right. what I'm saying? I just, this is my version of if I'm hungry and I want some fried food, this is what I eat. Right, you so know, I and I'm trying to show y'all an alternative. These are the burros right here. So this would be a burro. Right, you would slice this up right here, and you would fry it, and it would taste like French fries. Or mm -hmm. you can do the purple potato right here. This is a purple. Right, potato. you would slice that, those up, and you can make uh, potato wedges. You can make fries. I've made some um, mashed potatoes with these. I've made uh, fried potatoes and onions with these. So oh yeah, that's you good, Trey. When you was on how you eat on a meat diet, that's you can do it on an alkaline diet, just switching out the ingredients, right? Exactly. Right, and yep. your seasonings and all that stuff plays a part in it as well. Let me show y'all my um. Let me see if I can switch this camera around. I don't know. I um. I buy my fruits and freeze them. I mean my vegetables. Like, if I know I'm going to do a lot or when I'm finna get ready, because I'm going to be working four days overnight out the week, right? So I get it's my huge. vegetables and I cut them up and freeze yeah. them. Your so I can salt. have everything I need prepared. Cayenne pepper. Get your oregano. All crushed red peppers. Then down here, you got onion powder. Brown uh, ginger. Cloves. Man, I got all kind of herbs and stuff in here. All that in here. So that's how you do that. And then my cabinets, bang, 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 bang. So I got all your herbs. Your, your camera not on, Renata. 
And then, so look, that's your chickpeas. Your camera ain't on, Renato. Y'all can't see that? No, no ma'am. Hold on. What about now? Nope. Well, shit. <laughs> look, it's showing it on All my this. side. Hold on. The what about now? Okay. Now. Okay, so you got all the herbs and stuff up here. Then I got my sea lime, cinnamon, chickpeas. Phonio. Yes, divine empress. We do. We we juice. Phonio. I just used my phonio because I uh, cooked the night. Got my hemp seeds, my walnuts. Then I got chickpea penne, chickpea rotini. Chickpea spaghetti, kamut spaghetti, spelt spaghetti. Then I got tahini, date syrup, dates, wild rice, chickpea flour, kamut flour, quinoa flour, spelt flour. You're welcome. That's all there. Uh, my kids gave me a uh, a noodle maker for my birthday. I can't wait to use it. Got this apple ginger juice. I've been drinking it. Different seasonings and stuff. So you just got to throw out everything that you don't eat and uh, what don't need, and then here, look at this big old bag of six pieces. Six pieces I got. Four pound bag there. That look good, Trey. And that's a five pound bag. So you cook the phonio just like you cook grits. It's just grits, like grits. Grits, yep. Just like grits. Oh, let me tell y'all something else I do. So I had started like a month ago, maybe, um, taking your teas and um, soaking your feet in it. Oh, man. Mm -hmm. You talking about some soft feet? Okay. Man, I'm telling you, once you do that, when you take your feet out, you'll never go to another foot massager again. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, mm -hmm. them herbs literally, I'm talking my feet even, be, uh, they're lighter, softer, like, that stuff is amazing. Those teas, man, they work wonders. They do. And the big old thing of agave. And I got some mango leaves. Tiana, what's good? Well, now your camera going back again. I did it on purpose. Okay. Someone asking about vitamins, bro. Vitamins ain't no good. No, vitamins. Your food Correct. is your vitamins. Your sea moss is your vitamins, right? Because if you go to the store, you go to Walgreens or somewhere like that, um, 100%. It doesn't have to be blue agave, just agave. There's different types of agave. I got this right here is a, is a agave nectar. This is the light color right here. This agave nectar. Mm-hmm. So... You see a whole half a gallon? You can get a whole gallon as well, too. But I just got the half a gallon. Um, He said, Rico Suave said, where you all get that spaghetti from? I make it with the these store? chickpea the, chickpe noodles. At the um the cab farmer's market. You're the cab farmer's market. I get these have. from, yeah. Or I, I go, or I got a store beside me that got these in, in Tennessee. I can, I can mm -hmm. get to the seat. Yeah, oh, yeah. Spaghetti noodles. You can order it online, too. You can order it on these, Amazon. You can get these. Yeah, you can at, order it. Um, Walmart has them. Um, Harris Teeter has these right here. This is the chickpea. Walmart, Harris Teeter, um, Whole Foods. You can get these at there. I get these locally. But when I want a lot of stuff that I don't have here, then I get it in Atlanta. So here's the Kamut spaghetti right here. Kamut spaghetti. And then here mm -hmm. is the chickpea. I mean the um spelt spaghetti. Here. Um Tyra said, did your appetite change when you went clean for the first two weeks? Absolutely. Yeah. Yes, your whole appetite. Like you don't even crave certain things anymore. You you, you no longer crave it. 
And then too, I mean, it may be different for some people too, because like I told you, I, I went into fear mode. So fear wiped out anything I wanted to eat. But it may be different for somebody else. You know what I'm saying? It may be a little harder. If you don't really have a lot of health problems, it may be a little harder for you. But it was easy for me because of my health problem. So, uh, Tyra, the only side effect, the side effects really is you seeing a change in your body. So you may lose weight. If you're overweight, you're going to feel energetic. You're going to feel um, mental clarity. Your skin going to clear up and all that stuff. But as you're going through the process, if you're depending on how toxic you are, you may go through de detox syndromes, right? So you may have rashes, you may break out, you may have sweats and stuff. If you're detox, if you was like a drinker or you were somebody who smoked a lot, if you were somebody who did a whole lot of things like that, you may go through a process of detoxing. But mm -hmm. keep going. Don't stop. Don't let yes. it make you go back. Keep going. Stay on the um, stay the journey, and then eventually, you're gonna go on the other side of that. Yeah, I had cold sweats the first two weeks because I wasn't smoking. My heart would beat fast, slow, fast, slow. It was, it was just, I was just, whoa! I'm telling you, but as long as I stuck with it, it went away. But that's the, what the I was side effects you, go baby. away. That's what I was telling you on that post. We are smoking and stress both plays. Uh, a part in having high blood pressure, right? Because the mm -hmm. nicotine in the tobacco products is going to cause vasoconstriction of your blood vessels. And when your blood right. vessels restrict, it's going to push the blood flow up, causing yep. high right. stir glycemia. So, and as well as stress. And stress can not only make you have high blood pressure, it can also make you gain weight because it's going to release a hormone yes. cortisol. And that cortisol hormone is going to make you gain weight. So mm -hmm. all that plays a part in it. Tyra okay. said she was 16, 5, 6. She already small. Right. So your body, our body has a natural weight, right? My natural weight is between 155 and 165. When I'm just on fruits and vegetables and things like that, I'm more on the 155-ish side. When I eat a bunch of like fried mushrooms, purple potatoes, and things like that, I'm closer to the 165 side. So I like mm -hmm. to be in the middle around 160. That's where I like yeah. to be. So we all have a natural body weight. So you're not going to lose no more than your body is supposed to be. Right. But you can build. Yeah. You can build yeah. if you want to gain weight. It's a way to do it healthy by eating mm -hmm. certain foods. I get, I end up gaining uh well I within my hundred days I end up stopping at one fifty. Mm -hmm. Once I start cooking my spelt bread and yes, eating my yes. I, I'm right now I'm one sixty five. Mm -hmm. That's from just cooking. Right. And it ain't going it won't go no further than one sixty five. Right, exactly. I, I make a whole bunch man, listen, when I tell y'all I'll be making desserts, I'll be baking. I'll be frying stuff. I'll be making biscuits and hamburger buns and all that stuff I make, but I don't go past 165. Yeah. I stay I right there. Either. Right. So, and your body will tell you, okay, it's time to stop frying these foods. Time yes. to mm -hmm. through the fruits and stuff like that. Your body will tell you. If you listen to your body, it talk to you. Yep. It, it does. You. Yeah. Um, I was raised on a Muslim diet. What's a Muslim diet? No pork? A Muslim diet is basically no pork, right? Yeah. And basically no pork. Um, but they still eat other kind of meats and stuff like that. Yeah. But the mental clarity, yes, mental clarity and focus is huge. You won't realize how much brain fog you had until you <laughs> get on this side of it. And right. everything yep. is so clear. Like your whole, like not only do you change, your environment change, the places you go change, the people you hang around change, the things you used to do don't excite you anymore. Yep. You know? Like you get irritated quick when you're around it. Like I used to do this. I used to hang around these people. Yep. I used to, like all that changes once mm -hmm. you get that mental clarity. Like things you used to allow yourself to, to put up with, to go through, to do. The today you would never. Right. <laughs> would never. 
You I actually like, went nah. through the brain fog. I yeah. went through the brain fog the first 30 days mm -hmm. until I took that Maya. That Maya Let's, took hold, that hold brain on. fog hold right on. away. Hold on. I was on that Maya hard. Listen, if you have, if you're anemic, if you low blood, uh, low iron, Maya, that's gonna help you right there, the Maya. And if you can't get the Maya, you need some sarsaparilla, you need some yep. burdock root, you need some chaparral, you need some sea moss. All that's gonna help you. Yeah. She says you got low blood. That's exactly what you, you need to eat a lot of um green your greens, yeah, right? green to your, kale. your kale, your watercress, yep. your dandelion, your uh your mustard greens, your turnip yep. greens. These are going that's your iron right there. And your sea moss. Get that into your body. Eat more of that, right? And you're gonna be on your way to getting uh that blood up. She said, if I stick to eating all raw fruits and veggies, about how long before I get off high blood pressure? Listen, and that's going to vary depending on how toxic your blood is, right? Mm -hmm. It's going How toxic, how acidic your blood is, it's going to vary from person to person. So don't focus on the time, the time limit, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody want to know how long, how long, how long. Don't focus on the time. If you just get in the habit of just doing what you're supposed to do and let it come second nature. Like you just get up, you don't have to think about it. You just do it. Your your mm -hmm. body is going to definitely adjust and you're going to mm -hmm. come off of those high blood pressure medications because those high blood pressure medications aren't treating you. They're hurting you nope. more than they're treating you. Yep. If you want to be, if you want to be honest about it, right? And these medications aren't to be on for long periods of time. It's a short time span to manage it until you make a change, right? Until you say, you know what, I'm taking this medication, but while I'm on this medication, I'm gonna change my diet. I'm gonna exercise. I'm gonna do these things so I can come off of this. But people become mm -hmm. reliable on these medications to where it don't work no it's more. Then they want to add more medications on top of that. And yep. then the toxins that are in these medications is killing your kidneys. Now we got to go to dialysis. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? So we don't want that. So eat right. Change your diet. Ty go ahead. Tyra said I have liquid chlorophyll. Is that good to drink? Um Yes, but listen. What is your liquid chlorophyll like? What is it? Do it have ingredients on it? Is it something mm -hmm. like moringa or spirulina? Yeah, is it grass. What's your chlorophyll? Yeah, we... Right. Look at your ingredients because sometimes that ingredients will say glycerin. It'll say other yeah. stuff in it, and you don't need that. If it just said chlorophyll, then I okay, cool. But if it got other ingredients in it. That's why we say don't do vitamins. Yeah. Go into the store and get vitamins because it's going to say yeah. gelatin. It's going to say ascorbic yeah. acid. It's going to say citric yep. acid. It's going to say all these other ingredients just to make it. And you might have this yep. amount of the vitamin in there. And then the mm -hmm. majority of it is all these other chemicals. When you could just go straight to the source and eat your fruits and your veggies yep, the and get and it vegetables. directly into your bloodstream. You don't have to digest yep. all these other chemicals. Okay. I started um, off doing the other berries like that. Lanice said, I don't think I need blood pressure pills anyway. She got put back on them in August. Lanice, why did they put you back on the blood pressure? Lanice? Yeah, I wish some of these people had a thousand followers so I can like talk to them directly. I did that. I, I um back in like 2019, uh I had pneumonia in both of my lungs in 2019, mm -hmm. which that's when I really should have quit smoking then. But uh, they wanted to put me on blood pressure pills then. So they end up giving me an IV in my arm just to give get my blood pressure down. I don't know what they used, but it brought it down instantly. But guess what it did to me? It made me it, so weak. They had to keep me overnight. Right. It lowered my blood pressure way mm -hmm. too much. Right. That's why I was telling you about the same thing with like diabetes. If your numbers are so, so low and we have to come in there and start an IV and put something in, it's going to take you on the opposite end of that. Yeah. So that's damaging to your kidneys. 
Same with your right. high blood pressure medication. When your numbers are extremely high to where they have to give you immediate medication to try to bring it down, sometimes they don't know how far it's going to drop it, right? So then you're right. on the other end of the spectrum. Now you're lightheaded. Now you're dizzy. Mm -hmm. You're nauseous. You're weak, right? Now they got to try to build you back up to a normal level. So you're just going up and down. Right. Like so. Um, Tyra, listen. These are some fools that's hiding chlorophyll. Okay? You got basil. Okay? Mm -hmm. Bladder rack. Dandelion greens. Okra. Turnip greens. Mm -hmm. Amaranth greens. Nettle leaf. Watercress and purslane. All right, it might a uh, wild arugula. Arugula, definitely. I, I'm sure you got arugula in your in your. You go to Walmart and get arugula. Arugula, basil, all that. A basil, arugula, mm -hmm. dandelion greens, turnip greens, okra, nettle leaf, no palace. Yes. This is chlorophyll, not a uh, CMT, MCT, uh, and uh, glycerin. Uh, no. no, I. So okra water, okra water is something that's that's helpful. Okay. Yeah. See, low sartan. Yeah, that uh -uh, like. Low sartan, lisinopril, amlodipine, hydrochlorothiazide, all these beta blockers, right? And they're not curing you. They're only managing. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have to change. get off of that table salt, the lady with the little umbrella, the iodine. Get off of that table salt. No pink Himalayan salt. We want sea salt only. Yes. Oh. Sea salt. Hey, I'm... Look hey, me. I'm walking into work. I'm walking into work, Trey. Y'all, I got to go. I love y'all. All right. Peace out. Yeah, I'll be easy. All right. Lanice said, I never, ever had any medication until then. My blood pressure was a little high for a few days. She said, I was put on 25 milligram of Losartan. It seems as if my blood pressure get high around my cycle. Mm, that's a... Mm. 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 Yeah. Mm. Um, it, it's all diet, though, honestly. It's all all diet. Tyra, she said, I switch my water to distilled water. No, you, water want, you, want, you, want, you want spring. You want spring water. You want the spring water. Not spring distilled. Water. Not purified. You want yeah. spring water. Right. Let's, let's talk about these waters because a lot of people don't really understand. A lot of people want um, they want the alkaline water. They want the essentia and the purified water and all these different waters. Purified water, all those waters have added ingredients. It'll say added minerals for taste. It'll say sodium bicarbonate. It'll say chlor chloride in there. All this stuff is added in there. And sodium bicarbonate is nothing but uh, it's baking soda is what it is. They're putting mm -hmm. baking soda in the water to make it alkaline. And mm -hmm. baking soda is no good. It will destroy your gut lining. It's a fake alkaline. Yes. It's not truly alkaline. You want the water that comes directly from the spring. And they just caught it, put it in a container, and put it in the store. Right? Mm -hmm. And then the next best thing, well, the first best thing is your fruit water, your H three O two. Then you want your spring water. Like my house, I run off well water, so that's good water. So you don't want tap water from the city, and you don't want purified or alkaline water. Yeah, it's it's plenty of studies or, or articles on the internet that that that, that show you how trash mm -hmm. municipal city water, by is. You can just look. You can look at Jackson, Mississippi. You can look at Flint, Michigan. You can look at all these different cities that got city water, and they got lead in the water. All mm -hmm. kind of. I'm talking about. 
Yeah, you know I mean? mercury and all yeah, kinds yeah. of stuff. Like, so you don't want that. Tyra, do key limes. Trey, you got a key lime with you? Put a, Pull out a key lime. The key limes, not the Persian lime. The Persian key, limes key are the limes. The key limes are the real, see those? Those are the small. That's why you know they got seeds in them. Don't get the Persian limes. Yes, those good then, the small ones. Oh, you, you got them? You got them? Okay, well, yeah, use them. Yeah, use those. Use them. Yeah. Um, They good for deodorant, too. Yes. All right, I know that might sound crazy to you. You know, you might have never heard that before. All right, but when you start changing your diet and you get good in it, you know what I mean? You won't be musty. No, because the odor, be the, that, that stinking odor comes from your body releasing yes. all these pigs and cows and everything you've been right. eating. Right. Exactly. So, you know, um, you know, uh, using key lime, put some coconut oil on your arm, shea put butter. some shea butter up on the there mm -hmm. with some key lime, and, and yep. you're good to go. You're good to go. Good to go. You're good to go. Oh, um, you're, welcome. you're welcome. Hair follicles, you need lavender oil. Lavender oil is good for your hair. Horsetail is good for your hair. Um, yeah, lavender. That's good for it. Lavender, lavender for oil. Hair. Horsetail, good for your hair. Um, even burdock because it's going to stimulate the circulation to your scalp. Um, even to say I've been using key lime and it has been breaking me out lately. You just how long you been using it? What was you using before the key lime? It might be it might be trying to get rid of information out of your lymphatic system, so it, it might be swelling you up a little bit. It might be inflaming a little bit, You're trying to pull it out through your skin. How mm -hmm. long? Four years. Four years. Hmm. Hmm. How you just did it plain by itself, or did you mix it with something? Try mixing it into like the coconut oil and the shea butter, and doing it that way instead of putting it directly on your skin and see if if that's a change. I would go there. Yeah, Tyra, get African black soap. Not the soap should not be black. It's not black soap, but African black soap. It's gonna be brown. I was using olive oil. Um. So you've been using the key lime for four years. And now it's starting to break you out? Hmm. Um. Yeah, I'm not sure. Definitely not sure. Try it. Try it. You tell you did mix it or you didn't mix it. Yeah, but your body could be trying to purge out toxins in your body too. Oh, uh, what shave grass? Shave grass is a, it's another name for the herb called horsetail. Yes, that's what I was just talking about. Horsetail. It's good for your hair. And you mix, it's good. What you mix it with? What about shampoo? Um, like Renata said, she used African black soap. African mm -hmm. black soap. I got some. Let me show you what it looks like. I got I some too. Ain't. Yeah, African black soap, and I use um coconut oil. African black soap. Yes. African black soap. Get your some if y'all ain't got yeah. none. They come in a big block. He just cut that down, but they come in. Matter of fact, hold on. So, this is how a big block like that. You see it? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You rub olive oil on it first and then key lime on it? Yeah. I don't see. Only, only, only thing I could say that why it would be breaking you out is if your body detoxing from something other than 
it's, it's, it's some mess that you detox, that your little fatty system is detoxing from. Was right. making you, was making you have like a, a, a you know, a, a red spot or inflamed spot under your arm. Mm -hmm. That's the only thing that I can I can say that the key lime is draw is is doing its job. It's pulling it to your skin, which making which which is a way to remove it. That's gotta yeah. be what it is. It's gotta be something that your body detoxing from. Right. Your and lymphatic system is detoxing from. And be mindful of what you're putting on your skin, too, from soaps to lotions to makeup to hair care products. All that stuff go directly into the pores, into your bloodstream. And it's very, very toxic, right? So y'all know we as women, we are like a multi-billion dollar industry out here. And so they make a whole lot of money on just catering to women from... Uh, weaves to eyelashes to makeup to skincare products to weight loss products all that stuff but a lot of these products got chemicals in it that can cause cancer and other diseases and stuff like that so be very mindful of what you're putting on your skin and on your scalp all right um listen y'all if y'all got any more questions look you can follow Forever Evolving. I right? follow her. I right? you can DM her. You can follow me. DM me. I right? you can email me. Carbon Base. My name on TikTok. Carbon Base Sale Food at gmail.com. Um, BC10. I'm gonna answer your email when I get off this live. All right. Um. Um. Like I said, y'all got any? question that you want to ask or you know whatever personally or you know you can follow forever evolving all right she'll follow you back the way you be able to message her or just send her a message however you want to do it right if it's okay. something that you don't want to ask on here you want to ask something private like i said follow me i'll follow you back and then you can just hit me a message you can follow us on facebook um uh, let me put my name in here on facebook and then I can um I can add you to my private group on Facebook too. So this is my Facebook. Follow uh follow me on Facebook, message me, say add me to your uh your health group, and then I add you in there. I post a lot of stuff in there as well. And you can ask questions in there or you can message me too. Okay. Um yeah, so um like I said, you can you can hit hook. You can hit up Renata, or you can hit up me, my right, and ask your questions. I right, um get both of them. You need the colon cleanse and you need the blood cleanse. Yeah, but listen, while you on your medication, if you taking it, make sure you do the teas yeah. one hour before or one hour after you do the herbs. Don't do them together in the same time frame or none of that. One hour before or one hour after? Me personally, I would suggest you take your medication first and then wait an hour or so after it, then take the herbs, right? Right. 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 All right. Um, yeah, and I'm back. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta make a bunch of tea right here. I got my cola cleanse tea on the pot right here. Y'all see my cola cleanse tea in the big pot right here. I gotta make more tea. All right. Um, Colon tea, kidney tea. Uh, I got plenty of blood tea I done made today. Blood cleansing tea. I made this today. All right. If you order some blood cleansing tea and the herb, then what the tea look like. Pre-made tea. 32 ounce jar. Okay. Then what it look like. That way you know when you get this blood cleanse tea, you know what it's supposed to look like. And you know what it's supposed to taste like. So when you make your tea, it should look something like this right here and taste something like this right here. Okay? Yeah, and when you get your order, it comes with instructions on how to make it. So please read your instructions, read the labels. It's going to tell you everything you need to know. And uh, like he said, that right there, that blood cleanse is going to tell you how it's supposed to look. If it's too, if it's too light, 
you hadn't cooked it long, or you haven't let it boil long enough or steep long enough. You yeah, let it steep. Yeah, 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 let yeah. it steep for a while. Yeah, yeah. And um, I got a juice, some peaches and mangoes, and all right. So I got a, I got a little bit I gotta do. Okay, and I know it's Halloween, so y'all make sure if y'all if y'all if y'all let y'all chill them, mm -mm. go out there and get that candy. I right, in two three weeks when they sit. Don't start talking about it's the cold weather. Right. All right. You you let them go out there and get three pounds of dope and eat it all in one, in one night. All right. And so this is why they're going to be sick. And they're going to be sluggish tomorrow in school. In two, three weeks. <laughs> okay. So yeah. don't blame it on it being cold. Don't blame it on the toboggan. If left the toboggan at home. All right. Don't blame it on that. They you, they got all this sugar tonight, and 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 that's what that's what that's what's gonna suppress the immune system. That's what's gonna get them sick. Okay, and I'm back live tomorrow. Okay, I'm back live tomorrow. All right, seven thirty. Okay, PM Eastern. All right, uh, depending on how I'm how I'm doing with making my teas and everything, I might be live in the morning. All right, depending on. How I'm, how, I'm, how, I'm, how I'm grooving, all right? Today, I had to um take an alternate route and, and go to a different post office because the main one I go to, um they had an employee kill a co-worker today. Hmm. And then he ended up going on a high-speed chase and killing himself. So the post office been closed all day. The Channel 9 News been up there investigating and it's been closed all day, so, so, so yeah. So I've been, you know, it, it kind of threw me for a little loop, but you know, I'm back live tomorrow, seven thirty p.m. Make sure y'all follow me right here. All right, all y'all new people, make sure you hit the hit my profile, top left fan corner. All right, um, hit my link tree. Follow me on Instagram. Add me on Facebook. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. All right. And uh, if you're on the website today, all right, make sure you use the coupon code SALFOOD for 10% discount starting tomorrow. I was just about to say if you remember. Starting tomorrow, all right, anybody that place an order for $50 or more, you get a free elderberry syrup, all right? Anybody that place an order from November the 1st to November the 15th, okay, you get a free elderberry syrup, okay? That's from November the 1st to November the 15th. You're welcome. Okay? All right? Um. So, so yeah, that's how we rocking, okay? And I'll be back live tomorrow, y'all. Wait, right? did, you say, did you say Tina? Um. She said she gonna reach out about her mom's radiation treatment. Yeah, 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 I got him. Okay. I got him. Okay, yeah, I got him. All right. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, 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 listen. Um, November 11th. Okay, listen. Um, I got this virtual class. All right. Um, November 11th. I think that's... Not this Friday, all right, but next Friday after that, November the 11th, all right, got a, a virtual class that's going to be teaching you how to transition, what the substitute bad season is with, what to clean your refrigerator out with, and, 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 and substitute with, all right, all of that good stuff, just teaching you how to transition, okay? Um, you can contact this number. 818-732-1318, okay? 818-732-1318, tell her I sent you, all right? And uh, you're trying to get a ticket for the virtual class. Say, hey, Carbon Bay Cell Food sent me, or you can text it. Carbon Bay Cell Food sent me, I'm trying to get a ticket for the virtual class. And she got you. All right. Um, that's November the 11th at 7 p.m. 
All right, she's going to take your name, put you in this uh, private group. All right, only the people that buy the ticket going to be in this group that we're going to be teaching it in. Okay? So, November 11th, all right? The number is 818-732-1318. All right? Um, yeah, like I said, hit the link in the bio. Make sure y'all follow Forever Evolving. Ask her any questions, all that, okay? Hit the link in the bio. Follow your boy on Instagram. Add me on Facebook. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Tonight, the 31st, now, you the coupon code sale food for discount, all right? So on tomorrow, got a whole new shindeen that we're doing, all right? I'll be back live tomorrow, 7.30, all right? Holla at y'all.